ascender a la cima, enfrentar a gigantes del boxeo y mantener una racha invicta, es un gran logro que automáticamente coloca a los pugilistas comunes en el estatus de leyendas. Sin embargo, hasta esta posición legendaria no otorga invulnerabilidad, como lo demostraron algunos mexicanos que lograron vencer a luchadores legendarios considerados invencibles. Saludos a todos amigos. Bienvenidos a Boxeo de Oro. En esta ocasión, presentamos un recuento de las asombrosas peleas donde grandes mexicanos lograron derrotar a peleadores con el estatus de invicto como si fueran nada. Siéntate cómodamente y disfruta del vídeo. El Príncipe, así era conocido Nassim Hamed, un británico de raíces árabes que se hizo bien conocido por hacer de los combates un show. Tenía una racha de 36 victorias, de las cuales 31 fueron por knockouts, su estilo era mortal. Su más grande error fue cuando le tocó enfrentar a Marco Antonio Barrera y excedió un límite al insinuar que el mexicano le tenía miedo por su poder. La pelea se libró en el 2001, y desde el principio Marco Antonio destacó con su estrategia alternando entre un estilo agresivo y un contragolpeo, que le permitió controlar el ritmo de la pelea. Como una bestia enjaulada, el británico incluso llegó a agarrar del cuello a su rival para tirarlo al piso con él, estando ya desesperado desde la segunda ronda. Pero ni siquiera así Nasem obtuvo ventaja. Hizo de todo. Cambió constantemente su guardia entre ortodoxo y zurdo. Buscó el contragolpeo. Levantó sus defensas. Y hasta pasó a la estrategia de acumular puntos a través de golpes clave. Nada funcionó. Marco Antonio Barrera lo tenía como un saco de boxeo. Y cuando estaba por acabar el doceavo asalto, el mexicano tuvo el descaro de tomar a Nasem entre brazos y estrellarlo contra las cuerdas. Sabía que le quitaría puntos, pero buscaba venganza. Just got 
have the reflex of a, a oh. Your average run-of-the-mill club featherweight might throw 65. Like he's doing more damage to you, rather than saying, there you are. But there it is. Attack. You wonder whether the prince has been thrown off. Okay. You don't follow a punch around trying to get a knockout. Right back at him. That's seen a 51 picking up the pace. Going to attack him, he box him. Then when he's the pissed off fighting, that's what Barrera is doing. He's pacing himself. But you want a solid fighter like Bar Barrera doing? Clowning with a clown. Emmanuel Stewart said to Prince Nassim, let your big shots go. Naz beginning to jab more frequently. With Barrera, he's going to have to climb it, bring it down. Close to the chin. I wonder what he's thinking now. He's with his dad, throwing it more frequently, landing it more often. He's been able to get square in the middle yet, but he's starting to pick up the power. The Royal knows with some Royal blood. Up the left, dance onto the Royal Kid. See that Prince was moving on and starting to take charge of the fight a little bit. On the that round. Now for the first time, you see the Prince getting close and moving. He's going his instructions perfectly. Partially blocked. Whoa, and landed solidly. And my point. Prince, he doesn't have anything else. He's got King and trying to land that left foot. Ni siquiera esto impidió que Barrera obtuviera la victoria del encuentro ante aquel que lo insultó a él y toda su cultura. Royal Storm. Ese era el apodo de Isaac Dogbow, quien como un vendaval logró ascender de las categorías más bajas hasta convertirse en campeón de peso supergallo.
Con su racha impoluta de 20 victorias, el ganés se creía invencible hasta que se topó con Emanuel Navarrete. En su pelea del 2018, Navarrete desarrolló una estrategia inteligente donde aprovechaba la longitud de sus brazos para mantener la raya a su distancia. Y funcionó. Cada que Dogbo intentaba acercarse era recibido con un fino jab en la cara o en el pecho que lo dejaba totalmente aturdido. En la ronda 3, Dogbo intentó meter presión con su contragolpe, pero Navarrete tenía perfeccionada su defensa contra él. En la sexta ronda, Navarrete logró cortar sobre el ojo, dejando en claro que tenía a su rival comiendo de su mano como quería. Fue en la ronda 9 que Dogbo parecía recuperarse con el cansancio de su rival. Pero una caída a la lona arruinó esta idea. Al final de ese asalto, tuvo que tirar la toalla, ya que se había herido su puño en la quinta ronda. Advantage the strength to hold Dog Bay and Ben. Previous five opponents, 492 to 200. He's already going down to the body. He's trying to slow down Navarrete. Jay Esteves about spinning Navarrete. Let him out, let him out, let him out, let him out. Who's first, but he just, again, to Tim's point, doesn't see. He has the reach of somebody who is six foot Jeff. Yeah, Dog Bay's leaning in, but he's disguising his, his attack. He's stepping back. Navarrete right. leans in. Then he's come back in with his combinations. Navarrete is actually lunging further in his punches. Navarrete then comes surge here in the final minute of round number one overhand right hand against the. This at 122 pounds. Navarrete, I think that was a head clash. The left side of the head. Let's check in with Bernardo. Pedro Moran, who closed the gap. When he's attacking, he makes Dog Bay feel. Your right hand. Tim, is, is that odd? I mean, he, he's giving up. I would expect him to be on the outside. His natural advantage, which is length. That is odd. Forward and put some pressure on Dog Bay. Just want to do it. Chopping down with the right hand after that exchange, trying to come in with that sweep against the shorter man. There's that uppercut. Triples up that back dump here in round number two. Dog Bay is hurt from that body shot. Coming in, throws a right uppercut. Sweeping left hand. Another body shot comes up. Big round from Emmanuel Neverete. Good right hand behind that jab. Neverete put that pressure on him right now. Listening to his trainer, and it's working. In the 11th round of his last fight. Dog Bay by going down to his body and take the leg in the stink read. Bro, landing 17 is not right. But that's what I'm gonna hit him. Uh, Bernie, what are they saying in the corner of Dog? On his shots, he's gotta be quick with this, uh, land a big right hand when he counters. Started off to the belt line. There's that uppercut up. Well, he sees Dog Bay leaning forward when he attacks. By Dog Bay's bunch of power. Wow, sweeping left hand from far away. Dog Bay is hurt from that. Left. And again, a left hook comes in against the champion. Swinging for the fences here with a minute to go in round number three. And left hook as Dog Bay dropped his right hand. Stepping back. Little test for Paul Dog Bay, the father. And how do you adjust? Like like how do you deal with an entertaining and challenging world title fight? U.S. debut in this fight at Madison Square Garden by knockout. Obviously, he's completely intimidated. Boy, he is not intimidated. He's actually doing really well in this fight, and he's hurt. Round. Dog Bay's greatest talent is his divine purpose. Remember the first time we ESPN.com. Go to the app, check it out. It is on the fighting on the outside, coming in the inside as well. He's winning that battle. At the right. To catch the lean in Dog Bay before he gets to behind his jab. The bad set. Every now and then he'll. Has impressed early on. The draw in Navarrete and catch him with counters like that. How do they adjust? What do they say? 
Where does he right. take it? He can't stand. This kid is strong, and he's putting the pressure on Dog Bay right. He's a step to him, turns southpaw for a moment. And there's a right hand behind it, though. But Tesla, when you pull straight back like that, oh, he's got sends him back again. You put yourself in a horrible situation against a guy with long arms that's pressuring you. Dog Bay right now is going to have to dig deep right now. Big hearts. You really do. You got a lot of big dreams. That's off Pente through that punch and Dog Bay hit the camp. Their success with a short uppercut. Dog, Dog Bay's retreating now. Yeah. And real soon, he's getting hit flush with these combinations. And power shots in an 11th round. It's really a roll here. Wonder. The champion looks tired. He looks confused. And he, I'm sure the champion didn't expect You can see that Navarrete, what he discussed today, visualizing that dream of the words and his stays awake, visualizing, thinking about the plus. A KO by round eight. I'm on the judges, <laughs> just trying to keep you apprised of what Navarrete is saying. For an opportunity, there's some noticeable swelling around the right eye of the champ. Yeah, he has to deal with movement. He has to deal with those long arms of Navarrete. He's switching from right-handed to left-handed. He's doing a lot right now. Yeah, Joe, you, you, you touched on the, the size. We're so accustomed at this point to seeing Dog Bay as a full, happy champion. But there's something dispirited about stop your fighter if it's been to me. This and you're his dad. If, if it's blood, it, you know, it, it didn't matter. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because, it, it, and we haven't point yet at this point in the fight, although Navarrete is in control. But always applicable, some of the common sense of boxing when you talk to Paul Dunn. Well, for instance, has a distinctive training regimen. But there's nothing, his dad, his uncles, his cousin, there, there's no precedent for how dog. This is when that tough sparring against tough opposition. Dig deep. Spawn with your brother. Spawn with your dad. That might not working right now. Half second. Yes, everyone knows. Trying to retain his belt here in his second title defense. Navarrete right now showing his versatility, moving back. Got he is winning this fight. He's got great conditioning still, but I want There's body work on the inside from the champion. Middle rounds. To me, he has his second win. Hey, look what he's doing right now. He's resting. He's resting by the champion. Championship fight, you don't rest. No, you're right. Take round. Absolutely. He's still looking for... and other fighters. The other guys come up from the only voice that Isaac has heard is his. See that in our 4D replay. So we are in Burke Hayes. The shorter fighter in the black trunks who really burst on the scene this past year. You see the reach advantage for the Mexican mandatory challenger. 72 inch reach. Dog Bay. And there's a right hand. And maybe the chin here in round number eight. That's exactly what those body shots are doing. Navarrete and also setting up the big shots over the top because Navarrete has to. Greatest talent of all, the ability to remain undiscouraged. He stopped going to Dog Bay's body. Jamming too. Yeah, the body just missed with the overhand right. And he had momentum. That's exactly what's happening right now. Dog Bay got the breather, recharged, understood the circuit. Keep in mind how we arrived at this point. Now the red rolling the action in the fourth, in the fifth, seemingly. What did you tell him he has to do with that right hand hurt? Throw down, score. Please, Bernardo, continue. His hand being hurt. He asked him to throw more punches. We saw what he did, and he still went. And in the 11th round, threw 129 power punches. He's Thank you, Bernie. So that over again for Dog Bay. It's a slip that time. But Dog Bay will have fact that that hand is hurt from Navarrete. 
The right hand is hurt. Might get him. Might put a shot to give him the air. Right now, not that they choosing to fight. Punching in again from range. Anytime Dog Bay sits out there on a limb, no man's letting him move his head. Navarrete comes on strong with his combination. You heard his father stay in his chest, walk forward. Oh, I, I just right now, I just right now set himself up to be hit with a right hand. With that back foot. Time! Switch. It's a three-point turnaround that round. This is going to be an inner at the end if it continues to go this way. Oh, I completely agree. Two world champions will be stepping in to decide the great Vasily Lomachenko and the confident force tonight here at Madison Square Garden. Heisman was handed out. Now, God, just throw some bombs. It was a little tangled. Yeah, it was just off balance that time after that. I just don't know why longest weapon to the target. And he has the huge reach to lies in. Eight-inch read advantage for the Mexican. But he's bagging out right now. He's putting himself in a hard situation. Oh! And in that red corner, one of the issues of backing up into that corner. And then his feet split awkwardly. He's buzzed by that shot. He is buzzed by that shot right now. Dog bay. A lot more cleanly than dog bays. Agreed. Always want to keep away. He's going on an offensive surge coming after you. And I see it for Navarrete. There's Navarrete. an opportunity for it right there, Timmy. There it is. Navarrete. Combinations. Catching Dog Bay on the way out with these combinations. Earlier. The challenger having a big fit. Looking for some traction. And then the left hand comes in. But this has been. A very entertaining title fight. Yeah, 22 pounds in the WBO. Dog, full of confidence. Never has had a sensational run. He's 25 and 1. He lost very early. Any defeat as a pro happened when he was 17 years old. Land the right hand at leisure if he wants. Look at the left hand. It's down. Plus, he's leaning on his back foot. He's in line. Boy, he's got that hop in his step, too. As if he, that it's within range of becoming a new world champion. Eyes half closed. Taking a beating right now. Both these guys have to dig down deep. And injury. And taking vicious body shots. Navarrete. Swelling around the eyes is really significant. As none of this round alone on the champ. And that left body shot that Navarrete of the champion, Dog Bay. Mexican challenger, Emmanuel Navarrete. Esteves saying, wipe down the mat in that corner. It's like a river back. Dry up anytime soon. Meanwhile, blood coming from the nose of the world champion. With all Dog Bay's analysis, you have to keep coming forward. Bay moves backward, he's losing. It's that simple. He's ahead. The champ is in serious trouble here. Navarrete. Four punch combination that Dog Bay backed up. Bay, but he is hurt right now. And he is taking that right, corner. Right, but this time, yeah. able to stay in his feet. There are survival tactics. Starting off his 12th and final round. Trying to Navarrete is up in this fight. I don't think there's any doubt about it right now. Navarrete off her up here. Don't think the champ can win from the champ needs he, needs to step, he needs to stay close. More than foot. Come on now. When you bag out from a tall man, you allow him to extend you. Especially when you go out fat. Now right there's tough, he can take a punch. It happened early. There was that glimmer of hope from the champion in the middle rounds. Then look what the Mexican challenger continues to do. He is closing in on becoming a new world champion here in New York. Wrestling just to get a little bit of rest. Thinking about it, thinking about Dog Bay's future right now. He's a young guy now. He's taking too much punishment right now. It's very to see your son as a warrior king.
of Isaac Dogpe. And now the rest to pour it on here. Final 30 seconds. Off balance, this is turned into a new beat down from Navarrete. El mexicano se mostró superior en todo sentido. Y aunque muchos creyeron que se trató de pura suerte, cuando Isaac Dogbo y Emanuel Navarrete tuvieron su revancha, como la crónica de un destino anunciado, Emanuel terminó destruyendo a su enemigo de manera sorprendente. ¿Cuál es su opinión de Wilfredo Gómez? Es un peleador muy, muy bueno, aguanta, o sea, pero yo soy mejor que él y además es un tipo odioso porque es muy hablador y todo me cae muy mal. Tres veces campeón de ligas y uno de los mejores boxeadores de Puerto Rico. Ese era Wilfredo Gómez que se encontraba en uno de sus mejores momentos cuando le tocó enfrentar a Salvador Sánchez, un joven prodigio del boxeo. El resultado de la pelea parecía obvio. Desde el principio Gómez buscó imponerse lanzando golpes de poder, pero cuando parecía que tenía ventaja, Salvador lo sorprendió con un gran uppercut que lo mandó directo al suelo. Esto hizo enojar al boricua, y el resto de la pelea se convirtió en una de resistencia que veía volar los más poderosos ataques por todas partes. Fue la ronda 8, la más encarnizada. Como un tanque de asalto, Wilfredo realizó complejas combinaciones de ataques, logrando que Salvador no pudiera hacer nada más que retroceder. Está enfrentando al hombre más peligroso. Una pelea que se antoja muy liberada. Estas peleas, cuidado con esa derecha de Wilfredo Gómez. Wilfredo Gómez, que ahí entró fuerte la derecha y a la gana Wilfredo se levanta y anda flojo sobre las piernas Wilfredo Gómez y por él el mexicano, aquí en la esquina, en la propia esquina de Salvador, golpes de ambos y hace la derecha fuerte de Salvador Sánchez, otra derecha fuerte de Salvador Pedro, lo vuelve a tocar con la mano izquierda y ahora la derecha y a punto está de mandarlo otra vez Salvador Sánchez y lo trae en una andanada bárbara tratando de terminar en este mismo primer asalto Salvador Sánchez sobre un hombre que está todavía lastimado en la acción del primer episodio se va veloz sobre las más cortes piernas de Wilfredo Gómez y le vuelve a meter la izquierda y lo lleva por todos los rumbos en una ofensiva cuando quedan unos cuantos segundos para que suene la campana. Se acabó el round. Como Wilfredo Gómez en la cuerda floja. Aquí el puertorriqueño a base de su pegada tirándose, jugándose el todo por el todo. Lo recibe con... La acción transcurre en una esquina neutral y está tirando de izquierda y remate de derecha. Salvador peligrosamente sus golpes. El, una pequeña cortada tiene Wilfredo. Muy breve hasta ahora este percance. Aunque firmado el pómulo derecho. Entra a la derecha y la izquierda y otra vez. Repiqueteando a dos. Tranquilo y señor. El peleador de Santiago que han diseñado. Después de fallar esa izquierda. Wilfredo que después la mete el hombre que nunca, nunca ha sido derrotado. Dado el pómulo izquierdo. Está bastante lastimado las huellas de los ganchos, perdón, el pómulo derecho de Wilfredo Gómez. Prestos de izquierda también de este Salvador Sánchez. Después de que Wilfredo Gómez habló con la boca de hablar, aquí en su propia esquina, Salvador, de todo, la decisión y las ganas de Wilfredo Gómez, entiéndose muy bien un transforme de derecha y de izquierda de parte de Salvador Ay, que es volente y el golpe de ley. ahí cambiándome Wilfredo Gómez Salvador retrocede hasta su propio lado derecha de Wilfredo Gómez y luego tira arriba que... aquí por abajo la del mes cambia para arriba se fue a tiempo Salvador Sánchez y se está reponiendo el de Puerto Rico el número 2 de un gran pelea. Él tiene la manera de trancearlo. Los golpes solitos podrían traer el desenlace de 
Raúl se vislumbró en el primer episodio y la oportunidad tiene que buscarla para descargar. Ahí Wilfredo Gómez está metido a la izquierda con una gran fuerza. Golpe. Cuidado el pegue de Wilfredo y muy de temerse. Le mete otra vez la izquierda y contesta demasiados golpes en lo que va de este tercer episodio dos años. Está crecido Wilfredo Gómez en las alturas del tercer episodio y ahí el valor, los pasos lo vuelve a mandar a la lona. Debe ser la táctica de un hombre que puede hacerlo con su boxeo de Wilfredo abajo y peligroso los remates arriba con la derecha. Se salieron los dos y estrella una violenta derecha y vuelve a la carga un la mano izquierda y ahora repite Salvador jugándose otra vez el todo por el todo un tono diabólico a la altura del tercer pero los dos están tratando de aniquilarse ahí el grito de México, México, México que sigue viéndose traicionado animando a Salvador Sánchez por un pelo cuando va a terminar este tercer episodio. Francia para sacar partido de su mayor alcance. Por parte del mexicano Salvador Sánchez. Pues, esa es la táctica, ese es el camino de venciendo esta noche frente a un temible retador de la división club. Magistralmente conectada en una combinación de tiempo y de distancia verdaderamente perfecta. Cada vez aparece más desfigurado ahí la izquierda de Wilfredo Gómez, el rostro de Wilfredo Gómez, sobre todo en todo el sector, con ese pómulo extraordinariamente inflamado ya, por su amor propio de un hombre que nunca, nunca, pero vean ustedes presionar impedido por su orgullo y que no quiere bajar derrotado y no quiere desmentir lanzando desde que esta pelea fue concertada. Sobre todo, todas las tabladas que tuvo. Un hombre que ha noqueado a ocho peleadores mexicanos está tratando de tomar de sí esta noche. A nombre de Salvador Sánchez, aquí en la propia esquina de Salvador transcurre y sigue metiendo sus golpes alternando el puertorriqueño Wilfredo Gómez cuando se acerca a izquierda con derecha y lo mismo abajo que arriba, este que es uno de esta pelea que ha sensacional el territorio, el cuarto round ha sido sensacional. Izquierda, pero está encerrado sobre un Salvador Sánchez, línea recta con paso de lado. A Wilfredo Gómez, el hombre que busca, porque también también de Santiago se han hecho hacer el foro mexicano de Sánchez, 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 soplan aire de Santiago, izquierdo de la cara de Wilfredo. Empieza a desfigurarse a la distancia y con la mano izquierda espléndidamente. Este ha sido el menos turbulento. De todos estará a cabo de su primer tercio. Se ha a retroceder y a irse rápido de su metió fuerte a una izquierda abajo. Muy cerca a la distancia de peligro. Salvador Sánchez que viene otra vez hacia atrás y lo está cazando Salvador. El de hacer la derecha a Wilfredo la división super gallo parece que no da pero a qué consta que ha entrado sus resultados en esta división pluma lo cual es propio es natural y ahora una tanda de, de salvador sánchez un remate con la derecha y aparece sangre con el lado izquierdo de la cara de Wilfredo López Reca, derecha y otra más y me tupe con las dos y como esta parte y se defiende ambicioso cuando sonó la campana. Es una masa grotesca el rostro de Wilfredo Gómez, impresionado con nosotros por el aspecto que tiene. Son lo mantiene entero y vuelve a ir a la carga en el nivel y la categoría de su contrincante. Antes ha demostrado también su resistencia. Ahí otra vez. De este episodio. Se mete en un 
cosas parecían decididas, Salvador Sánchez contraatacó con un demoledor ataque que nuevamente tiró al piso a su rival. Wilfredo quedó aturdido y el referee tuvo que declarar una victoria por knockout, poniéndole fin a la racha intacta de 33 victorias de Wilfredo Gómez. Fácilmente la rivalidad entre Edwin Rosario y José Luis Ramírez es una de las más grandiosas de la historia del boxeo. Ambos se enfrentaron por primera vez en 1983, donde Rosario se alzó con la victoria, pero quedando gravemente herido. Una segunda pelea se planificó para el año siguiente en Puerto Rico, hogar madre de Rosario. Pero aunque Edwin Rosario tenía su racha de 24 victorias, José Luis ya había librado más de 80 batallas y no repetiría errores del pasado. No obstante, la pelea no comenzaría de la mejor forma cuando en los dos primeros asaltos, el mexicano cayó en la lona, producto de los golpes de poder que le lanzaban. Todo parecía perdido, por lo que Ramírez buscó meter presión en las siguientes rondas para recuperarse. Great deal of authority. Round. 
And we're under a minute left. Every blow that Rosario lands. Ramirez is cold. In the right hand, he doesn't seem to know it. Oh, a cold right hand by Rosario. Must be the longest round in the history of Ramirez's life. En una batalla de resistencia, Ramírez logró imponerse con un gran ritmo de pelea y unos golpes que iban a la velocidad de la luz. En la ronda 4, efectuó una mortal combinación de jabs y un uppercut en la quijada que dejó tambaleando a su rival. La respuesta de Edwin Rosario fue darle la espalda y volver a su esquina. El héroe de Puerto Rico se había rendido, siendo declarado perdedor por nocaut técnico. No te vayas. Aún tenemos increíbles batallas de mexicanos poderosos por contarte, así que te pido encarecidamente que te suscribas a Boxeo de Oro y compartir los vídeos en tus redes, ya que eso nos ayuda a crecer aún más este proyecto y llegar a más personas que puedan apreciar el verdadero valor que tiene el pugilismo. En los 90 nadie podía quitarle el título de Invencible a Kevin Kelly, quien había obtenido el título universal de Peso Pluma y Super Peso Pluma, sin perder ni una sola vez, 
alguno de sus 41 combates. El resultado parecía obvio cuando Alejandro González le plantó frente en 1995 y desde el primer momento Kelly logró derribarlo y realizar una ráfaga de golpes con su monstruosa velocidad. Sin embargo, González demostró la gran resistencia que poseía para lograr realizar los contragolpes en momentos determinados. Potentes jabs precisos que empezaron a pasar factura a Kelly, haciendo que empezara a mostrar una fatiga nunca antes vista. Y en la octava ronda el estadounidense cayó en la lona.
tell you, I blame that kind of He came right back and jumped on him for not jabbing when he didn't tell him to land one jab. And Jose Reynoso told Alejandro Gonzalez between rounds, move some back against the ropes. Well, for a minute there, Gonzalez was executing that strike. You're looking at a couple of featherweights fighting, trading power shots toe to toe. And he's the uh, champion in this kind of fight at all. He went out trying to prove power, going for Talking about Kelly. Kevin Kelly. He didn't need to be in this fight at all. Gonzalez is having a fight that he needs him to lose. He can only become champ of the world. Kelly backs it more effective. Hard left hand inside. He's allowing Gonzalez, no jab, nothing. Just walk to me, I'll be there waiting on you. Hold for eight or nine days coming into this week. He said he didn't think it would have the movement you might have expected so far, George. Well, there's a hard left hand by Gonzalez once again, as Larry Merchant pointed unfazed by Kelly's power shot.
round six. So a straight left. He's going to have trouble seeing the but Gonzalez has went out there to win the title. He has come.
Kelly no pudo recuperarse luego de eso y fue declarado perdedor por decisión del juez en el mismo asalto. Meldrick Taylor era un prodigio estadounidense que impactó por su mortal estilo de pelea, que muchos nombran como el heredero de Sugar Ray Robinson. Se tenían altas expectativas de su combate contra el consolidado Julio César Chávez, pero nadie esperaba que esta fuese declarada como la pelea de la década y la pelea más polémica de la historia. Se vieron las caras por primera vez en 1990. Desde el principio se notó la ventaja que había en las diferencias de edades, ya que Meldrick Taylor podía darse el lujo de moverse por todo el ring y lanzar los más grandiosos golpes de poder, mientras Chávez apenas y podía hacer algo. Por cada ataque que atinaba el mexicano, su rival lograba conectar un contragolpe doble. Para la octava ronda, Taylor había realizado 269, mientras que Chávez apenas y si pudo dar 137. A partir de aquí, el mexicano logró recuperarse, lanzando una ráfaga de puños que lograron dañar la vista de Taylor. Su cara estaba hinchada y tenía sangre saliendo de su boca, e incluso lo dejó tan aturdido en el décimo asalto que el estadounidense se confundía de dirección. Aún así, Chávez tenía la ventaja numérica y solo un milagro podría hacerlo perder, algo que al parecer sucedió. La pelea es el destino de Julio César Chávez, las diarias de Las Vegas, Nevada. Empieza a meter su gran velocidad, ya le colocó un buen gancho con la izquierda, Julio César Chávez en el controlado, sino demoliendo paulatinamente al adversario. Y los que pensaban que Julio César iba a ser un blanco fácil, muy equivocado, porque también efectivamente ha demostrado el jump con la izquierda, el uppercut con la derecha, de Berwick Taylor, se va Julio César Chávez, empieza a trotar el asalto cuando los puños de Taylor entran, Chávez que se ve presionado, se ve un poco es el plan de Julio César Chávez, cortar la salida con paso lateral para no darle escapatoria, buena velocidad de izquierda de Berwick Taylor, y dicen, será su medida cabal. Ya va con la derecha antes, muy veloces, pero sin portería de Melvin Taylor. Saca con las manos crispadas y un sudor en manos de los dos colosos de la división de Super Ligero. El gancho de izquierda ganando el golpe Melvin Taylor. Taylor y la potencia devastadora de Julio César Chávez cuando bate seguramente una grandiosa pelea. Duelo tremendo y sensacional, vaya verdaderamente fulgurante. Si nosotros estuviésemos, estamos un tanto precipitador y hasta de tanto. Y cada vez que presente Julio César, rompe el viento. La ruta violenta con repetición de abajo hacia arriba. Taylor, el hombre del pantalón claro. Y los Chávez y Ricardo y Perezoso, un público mañano le responde coreando de su gol Firme el puño izquierdo sin potencia completó pero basta su segunda el público quiere que Julio César lo sienta presente y brindando de todos a la de Patrick Taylor la red y el efecto es un hombre de calidad natural usted sabe también que la velocidad cuentan para sus efectos. Y César está actuando de acuerdo con su vocación y lo más difícil y lo más peligroso del boxeo. Ir a buscar a base con golpes de counter, que en este caso son de México, 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 tratando de generación y a la vez de apoyo y de impulso. Para Chávez conectó con la izquierda, decidió en par de ocasiones con la derecha, con verde de público. Lo mandó tambaleante a su rincón, sangrando por la boca y sobre todo ha radicado desde hace muchos años en Culiacán, Sinaloa. Henry Taylor, por, por supuesto, no es caída oficial, recibe el tropezón como una caída y prorrumpieron en la larilla, se a buscarlo, lo llevó, lo recibió con una granizada, dos manos, pero empieza a engallarse, echa abajo la guardia, como invitando a Taylor para gente a acechar desde atrás del matorral, fue para la izquierda de usted, según la instrucción de su rincón, pero prefieren minando la resistencia y la velocidad de Melvin Taylor. Está por abajo, 
tratando de darle a Julio César una boca de golpeo al cuerpo que es implacable en el caso del monarca Super League, reventada por dentro con los disparos del segundo asalto. Ya muy confiado en el round anterior, ahora está un poquito corrigiendo la zona de ataque, trato de meterse con el jab con Eric Taylor. Sigue el ambiente cargado de electricidad, cuadrilátero de lujo en una noche de auténtica gala. Tremendo César que ha estado y es inactivo en este round número 3. Y la vuelve a meterse en corto Julio César, definiendo su portentosa mano izquierda. Round número 3, por el centro de dos de las dos pero que son, de hecho está en juego la más válida en este momento, de lo que fue la ceremonia de peso y de lo que está haciendo esta pelea. Está ganando más la distancia corta, no la distancia media, que es la velocidad de mano en el cuerpo a cuerpo. Además, Taylor, que es el recurso y incrementar de velocidad de piernas y de mano al contrario. Entonces, tanto Melvin Taylor como Julio César Chávez, todo gira y gira la estrategia, la táctica en esta pelea tan importante. Para uno, para el ahí, el brazo de caballazo, lo que hace con el ojo, el Taylor, y el de izquierda como recurso para mantener la distancia, la llave, y después disparar sus rápidos golpes de la mano izquierda y de la derecha, con repetición, la gran parte de Melvin Taylor. Melvin Taylor ha saludado sus cuatro de allá de las últimas vidas de nada, ha disfrutado a un ritmo como a usted le consta bastante, bastante. Realmente terrible el pon de Melvin Taylor, pero cuidado, herido, fuerte. Ya están en el último medio minuto, vea esa dos, ¿verdad? El campeonato del mundo. Vamos a ver hasta dónde, hasta dónde esta labor de tapa de parte de Julio César. Un novio más, el cuarto de este duelo de campeonato. En un santiamén, cuando cruzan disparos, la gran velocidad y lo que fue un uppercut sensacional y con un formidable trabajo de izquierda. Ahí mete un can, puede distraer de nadie de lo que sucede entre esas azul, roja y blanca, porque golpeó el cuerpo la ofensiva constante de Julio César Ríos, Julio César Chávez, pero él dice apenas física. El uppercut venenosísimo de ser la nuca, Mary Taylor con cabeza, pero no descuida su guardia Melvin Taylor por primera vez en lo que va de la pelea sigue conectando con violentos ganchos de izquierda Melvin Taylor en tanto que Julio César como que ha estado en su momento ahora hay que llevar las cosas con calma sigue tirando a Melvin Taylor no con mucha potencia pero sí conectando a la mayor base y celebrar al que le están llegando bastantes golpes en este quinto round a ver un poco la altura el calzón de Melvin Taylor el protector Sigue tirando peligrosa presión, tratando de, de contrarrestar, de no revelar Julio César ahí las manos de Merrick Taylor en el mejor round, bastante complicado para Julio César, el monarca de la misma división. Hasta estos momentos lo que se encontró está representando para Julio César Chávez una gran velocidad de mano gancho de izquierda también hubo ilícitos como fue ese casado y después balanceando también sobre la nuca de más calculador como queriendo una cuantidad de ah, para Julio César Chávez a partir del diciembre de los 64 derrotando a la Zabache Martínez de Los Ángeles en efecto hasta ahora la más dura la más pero Todavía se mantienen dentro de la base. Al finalizar el territorio estarán pues, de la ruta total de los dos catálogos. Es un tanto... Los golpes han sido espaciados y por Parado de lado este sexto round. Aquí termina la acción del sexto round. Acertó Julio César en el round anterior, le hizo una lesión aparentemente sin nada en el rostro Eric Taylor y con su espectáculo la seguridad del campeón de Ha estado muy fácil, ha 
sacado todo el provecho posible de Elvis Taylor que sigue en el metrallador, ahí caló con un gancho que queda a la punta de la barba, de doble gancho abajo y arriba, la tormenta se abate. Ahí está metiendo las manos hasta con asombrosa para él, le responde con dos o tres y hasta más Elvis Taylor. Ya de puño, de puntería, de buena escuela, que demostró la de 1900 que regresa con par de ganchos de izquierda arriba y con los tratos de Julio César necesita tirar golpes de abajo, arriba, round, a partir del piso ha venido un que no es el, sale el panorama de esta noche aquí en Las Vegas de Vargano, el sol me dio ahí, me reitero, de una hechura, de una manufactura, gente perfecta, quiere regresar con golpes de abajo, Julio César, que está teniendo un interpretario, está en el resto, Julio César. Cabeza con cabeza, cornamenta con cornamenta. Importante definitivamente la condición física. Arriba del pómulo izquierdo o sobre el pómulo izquierdo y semicerrado también el ojo derecho. El dictero le haya conectado mayor cantidad de golpes. No deja a Mary Taylor en su propósito vial de la Federación Internacional frente al monarca de Consejo y Grande, fulgurante velocidad, que encuentro el Jimmy, el trueno contra el relámpago. Y le ha faltado un poquito a su Diocesa Acciones Blandas, que es el recurso indicado bien al contrincante. Vuelve a escucharse de México, México, México una fuerza verdaderamente que toca como un ciclón aquí estamos recogiendo al final muy animado sale Merrick Taylor de su rincón sabe que tiene algunos momentos y Julio requiere de un cierre sin no volver a imponerse el hombre como lo había hecho ya por el segundo, tercero y cuarto perdiendo altura en el quinto, sexto, séptimo y en el octavo se monta ahí en corto verdadero alarme de no lo seré hasta que pueda derrotar a Melvin Taylor en su segundo, tercer y cuarto round ha perdido por completo el con una enorme tranquilidad mete sus puños de Melvin Taylor y con la derecha castiga fuerte la cabeza del tiempo precioso para Julio César Chávez otra vez en gana que en este terreno Melvin Taylor está dominando un hombre que es especialista en el PTA Chávez, Chávez, Chávez en el noveno round de la pelea sigue sangre el ojo izquierdo y combatiendo con la seguridad de que se consiente fijado en Sinaloa. Se necesita para evitar dejar en este cuadrilátero la calidad de invicto. La gente se mete con Richard Steele, estaba utilizando tácticas ilegales, se ve remetido y ahí lo impulsa por la cintura y se lleva otra moración. Décimo episodio. Así de cerrada, así de estos momentos. Varias amonestaciones del referee de Melvin Taylor por golpe de abajo. ¡Qué gran y qué respuesta también! Sufrida, fuego gracial Melvin Taylor, sacudiendo la cabeza de Julio César. Eludió una buena cantidad de los golpes. Vaya pelea, amigos nuestros. Pelea por de condición física, de capacidad combativa. Este deporte es trujante y emotivo del boxeo. Gran parte de la acción se ha desarrollado en corto rápido, sin sentir el transporte del tiempo y profundamente por la boca y por la nariz. La hemorragia de 10.000 aficionados gritando Chávez, Chávez, Chávez y sangriento, sangriento que tiñe de rojo. La sangre de Henry Taylor, este relampagueante peleador. Fulgurante, rico, Melvin Taylor. Va en izquierda y buena derecha de seis. Otro episodio seguido y sensacional. Relativa de capacidad de respuesta y de rapidez. De este hombre que odio tal parece que en la toalla que le aplicó en la boca lacerada a Luz Duba en los mágicos para darle nueva fibra. Porque entregarse como si no hubiera sido suficiente ese round de auténtico de esta pelea sensacional. Ha respondido a todas las relámpagos, 
pero el trueno va a tener que reventar en serio Henry Taylor. Jalando a fondo, salvo la mejor opinión de usted, creo que va abajo el punto de Lea. Y a mete la derecha con todo lo que tiene Julio César Henry Taylor. Mucha más la potencia de... Ahí están en el undécimo episodio, aquí está la oportunidad para Julio Parado, Melrick Taylor, casi casi vaciado por el entre dos verdaderos colosos del cuadrilátero. De poder a poder, saca a la izquierda Julio César, era la pelea del siglo, pero está muy cerca de serla. Ahí va de serlo, con un espléndida condición, Taylor ha podido sostener este ritmo, sentado lacerado abajo del ojo izquierdo, y con los gol ya está todavía cambiando golpe por golpe, por un hombre que ha demostrado ser enorme como esta esa combinación a dos manos y luego enorme sacrificio de uno y de otro viendo los rostros y lo está siendo apaleado cuando va a terminar el penúltimo capítulo poderoso inclusive en el undécimo analizó en lo que a velocidad se refiere ponía su casa esta noche Messi Taylor no lo van a recibir tiene el rostro desfigurado, su mensaje, los dos ojos, en fin, le, le van a decir en la casa que quién es, aquí precisamente vino por los impactos sólidos, se le aterrizó en esta escena de este cuadrilátero. Ya no se sabe de qué ojo está más lastimado Metri Taylor, algo de Nevada, no son muy confiables que digamos. El coro es general y un ánimo de... Ya chat, porque a todo esto hay que añadir la sana hemorragia bucal que viene yo este derechazo de Julio César, mierda, y por la que está lastimado Messi Taylor, Julio César, pero Julio no muerde, Julio César no muerde, muerto, desesperado Messi Taylor, Julio César Chávez, pocas veces amigos, no es tan emocionante, le dobló con un derechazo a todo el todo de manera normal y aquí hace la ilusión todos los volcanes de mundo se acabó la pelea en el último asalto a 10 segundos de acabar Chávez logró tirar en la lona a su enemigo y cuando el referee fue a chequearlo el boxeador seguía consciente más no respondió y se declaró un knockout técnico fue un shock para todo el mundo por el poco tiempo restante, y hoy en día se sigue debatiendo sobre esto. Pero cuando Julio César Chávez volvió a ganar en la revancha que tuvieron un año después, la respuesta de quién fue mejor quedó aclarada. Juan Manuel López era un boxeador que había logrado alzarse con el título de peso pluma, a través de una racha invicta de 30 batallas, en las cuales se dio el lujo de vencer a 12 grandes ídolos mexicanos. Sabiendo esto, era entendible que tarde o temprano aparecería un vengador cultural, y ese fue Orlando Salido. Parecía que ambos tuvieran un asunto sin resolver, pues, desde el primer momento se centraron en atacar el rostro de su oponente. López ejercía más presión con el uso de su puño derecho, hasta que en, en el cuarto asalto, Orlando sacó una serie de combinaciones de otro mundo que hicieron tambalear al boricua, y en el quinto, logró tirarlo a la lona. El resto de la pelea, López intentó mantenerse en pie levantando su defensa. Or uh, Salidos know that Juanma is going to be there, so I'll have better off sneaking the right hand. Of course, that's his main punch in this fight. No day TKO in round eight against the legend Rafael, and he kind of just walked through him in that yeah. fight. A very exciting. Fight. Has not been that much of a pressure fighter here in round one. Body by Lopez. Salido, not, nothing got through big time. Is that straight left from Lopez? He's to establish that straight right hand. He needs constant pressure, but he has elegantly. 
I don't know what color or what kind of trucks <laughs> those are. They're stylish, though. We don't beat Trinidad. Did you know that? But not Felix. Ran or Trinidad. <laughs> Who would swan into the after for a second? Yeah, did. Last time we saw him here in Puerto Rico, he fought Sergio down twice in the first round and then finally finished him. Try to break down a fight, you know, you look at it. I thought, you know, I thought the straight left might be better for Lopez than the hook. Big knock got punched off, and the straight left has landed more often against Salido. There. And when Juan Ma was told in the second half of fights, he said, let them think whatever yeah. they want to. Through it stand up at the end of the fight to get a decision. That was the only 12 rounds against Matagua. Much better second round than a first. I don't know that he's won it, but he's been dumb. Lopez very patient. With that. Good hook by Salido on the inside. Lopez is that's what makes him such an exciting fighter. And there he is right there. He's at Salido. Stylistically that may give Salido a chance, but it's making both men wailing away. Oh nice one. Straight left hand getting through for Lopez. Lopez with the broader shoulders. Now punches it.
This is a close run. That looping right hand, very effective. Pero sus mares eran más que evidentes, por lo que en el octavo asalto terminó perdiendo por nocaut técnico. En el 2012, López intentaría recuperar su título de peso pluma en una revancha. Round number one. Overhand right of Orlando Salido. More take his time and use his skills. Salido, regardless of what López has always had in every single fight. And first round scheduled for 12. In her last fight, Wang has in the purple and silver. I can't believe Salido got up from it. And this first round, very <laughs> relaxed, keeping his gut. When the opponent gets close, he stands straight up. It makes him accessible to those big right hands. There's the Matador. 
Nice right hook. Barbara's ex-wife showing support. But it's it's good on many levels to see that the family is reconciled. And I know that first round was a fill-out round, but I know she's now Salido trying to jump on Lopez. Hall, Hall. Right hand. Lopez is trying to do something very difficult tonight. Change his feeling that he will resort back to his boxing identity. A left. Salido closing in. Now Lopez. With a nice little left uppercut by Salido. It hasn't been a frenetic pace, but it's been a lot. But again, he stands straight oh, up. Oh, a nice left. Lopez will have to come out of his shell, and maybe that was it. The third round in Puerto Rico, the former champion. End of the first two rounds. Let's take a look at the... He really landed that big knockout punch. It's these punches that are getting through. And it's... Oh, Lopez, we're accustomed to see. The one that... He's trying to do what he's supposed to do, but he's just not that man. Hit by these big shots. He might have a chance to win this fight, but he's not... Fighting very intelligently now. He's not... Now he's not as wild as he was. I may be hurt. One more. Not answering back. I took the championship from you here. And well, Lopez... This isn't the man we're accustomed to see. Uh, but he's going to fight because he's a champion that he is. We begin the fourth round schedule for Lopez. Orlando Salido, the champion, and silver and blue, Juan Manuel Lopez to engage. A hand much more than he did in the first fight. And honestly, has actually round Salido, 29 of 63, 46%. Hungry. He lost his title before in his first defense. And he know what it is. We have to remind you that one right hook from... Where is Juan Mas? We're waiting to see Manuel Lopez. And that's well, right. not a bounce in his step now, here in the fourth. It's been his best round. He's got the crowd oh, behind him. Look in this round, but he has come back and made a round of it. There. His fans here, and uh, he has all the motivation. Last round, he landed his most significant punches, and I thought there was some. And he took the title from in purple. 12 rounds for the WBO featherweight championship. You can say for Lopez, he landed only 19% of his punches. Throw these overhand, looping overhand shots that you don't see. And you run. Lopez, not using any angles, can find himself in this fight. Nice loop. Salido, bending over. Of a boxer puncher. And he's having some success. At right into it, so he yep. can land those leverage. Let, have leverage on him. You know, I, think, I don't think he's tricking. He's, no. not, he's not showing any. Ooh, he barely missed it. Oh, here it is, a left hook by Salido. Moving in for the kill, 18 seconds oh. to go, and he slips. That was... Is Salido hurt? And that's the end of the round. For sure, and it shows you the toughness of Salido. Orlando Salido, the champion, knocked down at the end round. Now the judges may not. Well, no, no, that's always been one of his best punches, that little sneaky right hook. And you know, Lopez took that right hand better that time than he had. He's turning into some fight, gentlemen. <laughs> that might have been the worst. First round, Salido was winning the round. We have Salido winning 9 to 46. Rico, Orlando Salido, the champion in silver and blue. Salido going down at the end of the fifth. This round. So, Salido jumping on him. Straight right. And that's the end of the sixth. So Salido, as we head into the seventh round, fifth round by the challenger and former champion. No, he cannot continue to stand. Score the big knockdown at the end of the fifth. Salido, though, it seemed like it's so much unnecessary punishment. Left hook by has gone 12. He finished out on his feet practically. It's Rogers Matago. He continues to tough Mexican fighter. Great head movement. Of Juan Manuel Lopez or Toledo for that matter. 
But man, is he taking a lot of punishment. Well said, Antonio. That right hand bomb fighting for his life right Lando Salido. He from the Boom! Great action here, folks, at the end of the seventh. Salido is 31, has been fighting since he was fifth featherweight championship of the world. Hey, hey, hey. Orlando, 31, I feel like this is the beginning of something big for me. Nothing. At the end of the fifth round, Lopez with a sneak 164 of 391, 42%. The same amount of punches, about 20 more for Salido, but he is landing at a better rate. So, and Salido says more than Lopez were accustomed to see. It's probably winning most of the rounds, we think. Oh, here again, Lopez is standing straight up, and he's susceptible for those big overhead four-punch combination. This is, this, Lopez is acquitting himself. Juan Ma, moving forward oh. by Salido. So losing the round, he's still been the aggressor. For the 31 years of the year. Salido, the Mexican champion. Ninth round, scheduled for 12 for the W. He has won three and won one lost decision. Lopez has been 12 rounds once, but it's Matago. Now Lopez going to the bottom. Lopez. Oh. Came down to it. He'll find Lopez in the center of the ring, going toe to toe. Right hook. Both eyes of Orlando Salido. Oh. Listen to this ground. Takes another uppercut. A left hand this time. 40. Wow. Incredible. Talking about laying it all out. Then Lopez. Oh, oh my! He's hurt. He's oh, and he goes down. So got Lopez in big trouble. Knocked him down. Pero solo encontró la derrota nuevamente a manos del mexicano. Su limpia racha de 30 victorias quedó hecho polvo. En su momento, Kennedy Golovkin y el Canelo Álvarez eran considerados los mejores boxeadores del mundo en su división, por lo que todos ansiaban un encuentro entre ellos. Aún así, seguro que nadie esperaba que terminarían protagonizando la más memorable trilogía del boxeo que ha habido en la era moderna. El primer encuentro terminó en un empate de puntos, por lo que la revancha era inevitable. Right hand back by 
Alvarez on it. Up the tap. Okay, now Golovkin. Aunque un retraso por culpa de Canelo provocó que el Kazajistán lo tachará de tramposo y cobarde, encendiendo las llamas de furia del rival. Cuando el segundo encuentro se dio en el 2018, el mexicano atacó de forma agresiva como pocas veces se le había visto, lanzando una serie de golpes de poder al pecho y la cabeza. Golovkin logró tomar ventaja en los asaltos siguientes con sus jabs en puntos blandos que buscaban la fatiga en su rival llevando a que el mexicano se tuviera que proteger en las últimas rondas, aunque este no perdía oportunidad de atacar de forma oportuna. Left hook missed. That 
But Canelo is the confident fighter in there right Behind now. the jab. Misses with the left hook, comes with more than in the moment. And that jab has got his career with Triple G, Lance nice Fall. Roy, you want it hard already, Max. He's not really used to that happening to him. He's breathing, he's very composed. But Canelo and Lance, good for him. But you see the margin by which, and it's something that Triple G must have felt he needed. G is winning the CompuBox numbers of the fight. One, Canelo Alvarez. Jim, I thought Canelo stopped. Easy to score. I wouldn't argue so if one of the judges had it going the other way. Alvarez, very, very close. Left hook lands for Triple G. Attempted right hands for Bedlovkin. Great punches. Canelo's landing the crooked punches clean. Yeah. That lands for Triple G. And good body shot by Canelo at the same time. It's a trading fight, just as was the kick, continuing to show amazing chin. Amazing chin, a very good jab has given him a little bit of an advantage, I feel. These are, these are for Canelo. He's got over Triple Z. That's what he needs to do more of, or at least in the eyes of the fight with that jab, though. Canelo's making him throw more punches with it. But so far, guys, we're in the fourth round. Triple G has not created any real fun. He's not put his punches together. He has isolated moments, and then Canelo comes back and counters. Oh, good shot. And his body work two up now. Triple G, 10 guy, comes right back with his own body shot. Triple G did not. He comes back with stiff jackhammer jab. At ringside. And now we go to round five of the schedule 12. I saw him working on the corner. Triple G had the red spot over the right eye. And now there's blood on his beard from that cut. I mean, Triple G seems determined to take the hook up. Canelo doing something to Triple G that Triple G has never seen before, Jim. He's constantly stalking him like that. Triple G is going to fight, trust me. To change the momentum of this fight. He is in fast. That's a good uppercut. I mean, good Triple G. Canelo stays in the center Mexico. of the king just as much as Triple G. And Triple G looks like he's fading a little bit, Max. Fighting on the perimeter and backing up and not coming. Everybody has to be killed running to a big punch. Good body shot. Punch. And still the body attack seems moving. But he lands his jab continuously. And it's all a matter of what do the judges want to look at as Triple G. Canelo brings it for the fans, for boxing. Canelo's doing exactly what they wanted him to do. Triple G is left. And Canelo's just going to get better because he's used to fight like this. Good body shot with the left hand by Canelo. He's just going to get better at it. Triple G has base. And the jab is probably Canelo was cut over the left eye in two previous fights. At, at this point, Love can up three rounds to two. And that's not winning the fight necessarily, is that he can't force Canelo to go back, Max. He would push him back if he stopped. That's what Canelo does. Right up. hand that lands for Golovkin. If Canelo wants to back up, that's what he does. So as many punches in this round. Let's look over the top for Golovkin. Canelo reaching with the right hand. Good left hook to the body by Canelo. You know, a lot of them, but he got to be kept off of that. That's what Canelo's working on. Left he got to really up And Triple G saw a really good defense, too, Max. He pretty much blocking that body shot. Man, for both of them. <laughs> fight, though, Max. not his fight. That's exactly, exactly right. He's Who's dictating the fight. Like he did the first fight. Canelo used to it. Like one of the first rounds of an Atlantic shot, according to Copy Box. Seven uh -huh. seconds to See go. that, guys? Triple yep. G waved him in. Now he's getting hit, and Triple G is getting used to the contact and egging Canelo on. Really tired, Max, because he's not used to this style of fight. Canelo used to this kind of fight. Canelo has had several of these kind of fights. Harold Letterman, how did you score the first six rounds of the fight? Okay, Jim, I got it three rounds apiece. I got it all even, 57, 57. Very nice fight, Jim. Uh, I gave rounds three, four, and five. Let me send five to Gennady Golovkin. Oh, but uh, I thought Canelo came back to tie it up. I've got it all even. Round in which Canelo landed more, many more jabs. And Canelo, Canelo continues to throw many more body shots and land more body shots than Golovkin. It's not enough to win the story of the fight, boy, after all. And if the end, good indication the judges do. 
Max, if he outstalks, if he stalks Triple G like this the whole fight, there's no way they're gonna give Triple G this decision because he's taking him completely out of his game. First fight, this type of fight, he's forced the issue and had his way when he wants. There's no way they're gonna give Triple G this pace. Canelo is not planning on going to the score. Oh, he's, not. he's looking for the knockout, which is of course dangerous against Triple G. Eight to this point. Hard jab by and landing a left hook. Canelo wouldn't have taken one from Galaka to land one. That's here that before a big fight like this, a fighter exactly what he says he's going to do. Canelo said he's going to take more risks. Canelo meant exactly what I thought he meant and tonight. Ain't nothing able to nobody else to do about it. Good position. But he landed hook. Canelo, I mean, for Triple G. Triple G is that and then walking to the neutral corner as the guy falls. A clear sign he's trying to motivate Golovkin to open up and take more risks and throw more hard shots in the second half. It's like I told Max, Abel Sanchez knows that fighting this style of fighting, if they go to 12, give Triple G that decision. And for what it's worth, Harold Letterman gave the round to Golovkin. In this fight that I see is that Canelo trusts his beard. He believes he can take Triple G shots. So the counter puncher has become the hunter. The stalker. Hard right hand by and Abel Sanchez is right. Triple G is going to have to take more risks and try to match power with power. Perez's power quotient is going up from round to round. Better believe it. And Triple G landed a good jab, Jim. I can't take be determined and dictating. He's landing the punishing shots, too. Right? For the most part, they're both landing punishing shots. But Canelo is the guy you'd rather be in most shots are devastating. And increasingly, it looks to me like Golovkin's going to have to leave one of those for us in order to win that fight. He's going to have to turn it around with it. He's taking a lot of punishment. Possible, Max. I don't love as Daniel Jacobs when it appeared. Canelo will, but his Triple G will still the test. So let's see what happens now. Harder punches. The cut opened up over Alvarez's left eye, too. This right fight. hand for Golovkin. Golovkin is landing more punches and significantly more jabs. Harold Letterman now has Golovkin sneaking ahead on his scorecard by a point. I'm surprised, I will say, in the last round, it's his punches seem to affect Canelo toward the end of the round. It took a little bit more risk. That's the first round I've seen that really had control of the fight. Triple G with that stiff jab. Oh, now lands the right hand again. Canelo comes back with his counter shots. Lands the right hand over the top. Triple G comes right back, firing with energy. Center ring. For a round. Takes a lot to fight like this, Jim. This is a tough fight by two brilliant fighters. And Canelo is making it work right now, on purpose. Too. And he do it again and put the fight away. On the line. Summon the greatness that fueled the middle of that career. And restore the leg. Only a few more rounds to see. Oh, good Hard right hand by Canelo Alvarez. Triple G trying to... It's an Alvarez round so far with 30 seconds to go. Big left hook for Golovkin. Triple G is fatigued. And the cut is getting bigger over Canelo yeah, Alvarez's yeah. left eye. Judges score blood, too. Triple G on the attack. No doubt about it. Every single round close as you can get. Uh, you know... Uh, as I say, I've got a 6-3 to three goal, but if any of the judges had it the, the opposite way, I wouldn't argue. Because each round is close. I mean, get standing in the middle of the ring, battery, get out of Golovkin. Andre right. Ward, a great fighter, closed the show and knocked his guy out. Does Canelo have it? I'm not sure. I think this is so difficult to fight the score. I could very easily see a judge having Canelo up six rounds to three, just the way Harold has Golovkin. Golovkin steps it up. He could go for the stoppage. But then Golovkin comes through with shots and like that. Two hard power shots. And suddenly has Canelo standing still and momentarily in trouble. Well, let's see if Triple G still has the magic. Canelo looked hurt by that, but he's firing back. He did look hurt. That was the most hurt. Canelo has Lovkin. But it Canelo's back on the attack. And going forward again. And outlanding triple in hand. Hard by Canelo. Triple so much the story it. of the fight. Yes, sir. Another hard right hand for Golovkin. And with his jab. The trouble for Canelo. To score this round, they're going to be remembering that rally by Triple G that was great. Right. Finally. Another body shot by Golovkin with the right hand. Meantime. Good hook by Triple G. Great hook by Golovkin. Killer. Body shot for Canelo. In the heat of the battle, 
Gennady Golovkin appears to have won the 10th round when most he needed it. In his type of fight, Triple G was sucking air and being rocked. And in the rounds, Triple G has fought his way back in to the point where it looks like he could change the outcome of this fight. Yes, he has. Adaman, our unofficial scorer, has Triple G ahead in the fight. The difference thus far, he hits them the way he's hit Canelo. And here Canelo is throwing back. Oh! Triple G making landing power shots through shot the 11th shot. round. And Triple G. right hand by Triple G upstairs is the best punch of the fight. Yes, it is. Save his career. His career needs a win. How is Canelo coming forward throwing power shots? Amazing recovery by Canelo Alvarez. He does. He's real Mexican style for real. A this minute left in the round, still on the table. This time Triple G found Alvarez needs a rally hand. And then limit Alvarez to one shot at a time. And there's a hard left hook. And a hard right uppercut by Alvarez. Alvarez and another one. A couple of real big right hands in the last 30 seconds. Another good right hand. Oh, he's gonna have to take that Another right good hand right hand. From Alvarez. In that round. And here he comes oh. again. Hard left hook by Golovkin. Dab lands for Golovkin. Golovkin landing power shots. Over the second half, the power shots upstairs. Else on fire the last several rounds. Willing this fight and rocking Canelo. Joe, this has been a drama show. Blowing and throwing. Alvarez lands power shots and rear six ball. Down the stretch they come. To go. Alvarez fighting as though he blink out. Only. These are two middleweight greats. Any era. Both of them. A minute to go. Who has the last rally? Golovkin landing power shots. Being busy in the center of the ring is what... Oh. Left hook exhausted on their feet. Ten seconds to go. Up for Golovkin. Who gets the last shot? Golovkin with the right hand. Al final... Saúl Álvarez se declaró vencedor de manera unánime, pues, aunque Gennady Golovkin llegó a hacer más daño físico, fue Canelo quien logró un mayor número de golpes en el cuerpo, siendo esta estrategia lo que evitó un segundo empate. El tercer reencuentro se dio en el 2012 y se repitió el mismo resultado. Golovkin's doing a good job. Golovkin is into this. To the volume punching of Golovkin, how he up puncher, especially when it came to. But you can hear the stump in each of those first two fights. Oh, Canelo. We told Golovkin about that. He goes, you know what? It's all in recent years. The first two fights. Hello. First two fights. He marks on Golovkin's face already. They're flat footed. He's not much of a. Both guys are looking, trying to set things up now. Yeah, so I don't think he can connect off. Just a second ago, sir. Of Golovkin, he's just not right in reaches to a ground. He's uh, being outsped by the younger fight. Golovkin neglects the body in that second. Well, according to Kami Box. What did you make of the advice of the corner, Chris? Diplomat, I thought the word choice. Believe in age as a fighter.
Drives around. One of them. Love can pass to turn this around, and he's got to. Accustomed to see. John, Jonathan Banks sold him in the corner. Need a From there, because Golovkin's not doing enough to. This isn't the monster we're cut over these last five rounds. That was the two Canelo fight, and that's exactly what Canelo did. Hey, wait for him, it's like you're doing now. He says, or put himself in position. Now is the thing between these two. Both of them were exchanged because they were throwing the same. Hello, he has to do extra and go strategy of his because we didn't see no body shot of him. And you know, it also takes a lot of. In their last in this fight, eight punches. He's just too tired to. Maybe it's just a lot to put. Awesome. He's just touching them. He wow. sees punches. There's a right hand. In that round, landed his best punch of the night. Don't let him get caught. Good body shot. Saúl El Canelo. Álvarez volvió a ganar y pasó a la historia como el único hombre que ha vencido al triple G del boxeo. Todos tuvieron que aceptar la superioridad de México. Es increíble ver cómo luchadores virtualmente invencibles encontraron como única debilidad a grandes y temerarios mexicanos que lograron vencerlos muchas veces de forma total con knockout. Y más historias así puedes encontrar en el extenso mundo del boxeo Así que suscríbete a Boxeo de Oro activando todas las notificaciones para estar al día con nuestras últimas actualizaciones. Y tampoco dudes en echar un vistazo a los otros vídeos del canal mientras esperas, te aseguro pasarás un rato igual de entretenido.